the interesting part of uh, AHOME's work is how we provide housing for the low cost that we do. Our formula is that we take one third of our clients' income stream. That comes to an average of about $160 a room per month. That room actually costs a home about $400 a month. The gap between cost and our income is made up from a variety of sources such as various governmental programs, the United Way, and then we have loyal friends of A-Home through fundraising drives who contribute private funds. I got involved with A-Home in the beginning when uh, Peg Norman introduced A-Home to my church, actually. That's when I said, I want to work for A-Home. Hefner was the second house, yes. We furnished the rooms, we picked and tenants. Um, we saw that they had meals. We painted the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Everything was a special experience with them. I can't say any more. <laughs> we had a lot of work to do. What Ahum would like to take on in the future, more of the same, is very important. Hi, I'm Linda Bean. I'm standing by the Saco River in Saco, Maine. I have been a volunteer with A-Home for almost 30 years. I started when Bill Harper, my priest at St. Church of St. Mary the Virgin, introduced me to A-Home. I have uh, done almost every job possible for A-Home. As a volunteer, my most fun was acquiring, seeking and acquiring new properties for A-Home to manage for people in need. Um, Congratulations on 30 years. You did a great job. Thank you, Linda Bean. You know, I think that a home, the goals for a home in the future, in my view, I think are, are largely to keep doing the kind of work that, that the organization has been doing all along. I think that continuing to uh, develop housing and operate housing uh, in a way that is feasible for the uh, pop for the target population and also uh, fits and meets community needs um, in northern Westchester is a uh, is a critical role and I, th I just I think that it gets more and more challenging uh, to be successful in developing properties and maintaining them and, uh, and making them available at affordable rents so I think that the challenge that AHOM faces is similar to I think the challenge that a lot of other um, affordable housing groups uh, are facing, particularly in communities where housing costs continue to rise. So uh, I guess I, I would like to see AHOME continue what it's been doing successfully for so many years and hopefully be able to expand um, its, the stock of housing that it's able to offer. And I think AHOME has been very successful at being able to effectively uh, communicate and build relationships with, uh, with neighbors um, and uh, local town uh, leaders to be able to, even in the face of some reservations, uh, perhaps about the development of, of new projects, to be able to move past that and uh, develop, uh, develop projects and ultimately in such a way that uh, they gain tremendous community support and to sort of see that process from you know, initial uh, concern, uh, uh, build uh, past that and sort of to to acceptance and assistance um, and then eventually the, uh, the the people who move into the uh, new project the new housing you know become accepted you know you know as neighbors and sort of that's a very satisfying process we had a neighbor uh, who made a really stupid investment lost all of his money and uh, was trying to live on an army pension, which meant uh, basically living in his car until uh, he hooked up with a home and uh, moved into a house here in Katona and uh, led a happy life for the next 10 years. You don't really see homeless people uh, here like you do down county. They're kind of invisible. 
He'd, uh, he'd uh, moved out of the neighborhood, uh, and I didn't see him for a couple of years. And then I was told that uh, he was uh, in the A-Home house here in Katona. While I was president, uh, we had a capital campaign and uh, wound up uh, buying a building in Croton Falls. It was, for us, a very successful capital campaign. But uh, most of all, uh, I'm proud of having helped people. Uh, I think AHOM does a wonderful job of helping people. I think uh, a home makes a wonderful contribution. Uh, it's really a great value for all the towns and the communities where, it's, uh, where it has residences and where it serves by providing affordable housing. And affordable housing doesn't mean free housing. As we know, the residents all contribute and pay rent. And uh, I think it's also valuable because it provides a wider range of housing for the communities where we live. I guess my vision for AHOME is uh, really to first continue doing the great work it does in uh, caring for the residents uh, and handling that process so professionally and well from beginning to end, from admissions to uh, residents, uh, support for residents, and really the property management side as well. It, I think AHOME is a much more complex enterprise than people uh, understand a lot of times. It's really a good venue for people who bring all kinds of different talents and experience, whether financial, social work, uh, property development. So it's really a perfect place to uh, get involved. One thing I'd like to, to really encourage is uh, others to get involved one way or another as volunteers and really to think about participating through board membership. Just in my time in the community, I, I had met people um, who, who were in need of assistance. And as it turns out, coincidentally, um, one of the very first people I met who, when I moved to Katona, turned out to be an A-Home resident. She was um, involved in, in an, another civic organization that reached out, uh, that reaches out to, to help folks in need. Um, and she was a, a driving force in that group, and, and she welcomed us with op open armed as, as volunteers. Uh, and so here was somebody who on one hand was in, in need herself, and yet there she was providing services to other people in the community. The, the major difference right off the bat with A-Home is their geography, that, that their territory is Northeast Westchester, which is um, extraordinarily expensive housing market. And the other thing that, that um, really impresses me about A-Home is their wraparound services, their support services. Uh, so once person, a person has a roof over their head, not only do they have a roof over their head, but then they have stability and they have other services that will allow them to be successful and to thrive in that new housing situation. The, the real success of A-Home is, is actually when you see people move out on, on their own. Um, there was a resident in Mount Kisco named Raymond who I became very close with, who I still see in Mount Kisco all the time. Uh, Raymond lived in, in Mount Kisco in, in one of A-Home's facilities for a couple of years and has now moved on. He's moved on to uh, uh, more independent housing. He's thriving. He's doing well. And those are the kind of success stories we love to see. Are, are people who once they're stabilized are able to begin to thrive and go back out into the community and live happy and successful lives. And that's what A-Home provides. My tenure as, as, as board president was one of transition. It was a very difficult time period. Uh, there was, shall we say, a perfect uh, storm uh, with the economy, uh, the worst recession really since the Great Depression. Uh, and so, the funding really dried up. It was a very difficult time for everyone. Uh, but I will say that the staff and the board and the residents kind of all got together and figured out how to, to get through it. And during that period, no residents um, ever lost their homes. And, um, you know, there was a real palpable fear 
that we heard from residents that 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 a home was not going to be able to continue to provide not only a home but um, a relationship uh, not only be able to provide a home but services someone to call if they need this or that or the other and uh, there was a real fear on, on the on the part of residents during that period especially so you know, I'm really proud of the board. I'm really proud of the staff um, just to get through that period. And I think, um, you know, I think a home's a better, better place for it. In the cities in southern Westchester, homelessness is something that's very, very visible. Um, you see it. There's, a, there's a, a rather significant homeless population. Here in northern Westchester, it, it's not so visible, but it's there. Uh, there are folks that are living in very uncomfortable situations. They may be uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a place living with someone that is just taking them in for a little while but can't really have them for a long period of time. So there's, uh, there's a, lot of, a lot of pain. There's a lot of kind of what I call quiet desperation. And um, that's where organizations like AHOME are just absolutely essential and they're doing the work that, that needs to be done. AHOME Coalition is a group of churches, synagogues, not-for-profit groups um, that came together to try to build um, an organization that could provide housing. And they have been involved in A-Home from the start. It's the backbone of A-Home. And uh, all of the members of the coalition provide both financial support and hours and hours of volunteer support um, helping with all kinds of projects for the residents. Some of us came and listened to a presentation from one of the residents at A-Home who discussed her life and how she had been suffering from mental illness and how she had gone through very many episodes of being hospitalized and being out and never being able to find her place in the world and how coming to a home had changed all of that and she just spoke with such emotion and um, appreciation for everything that it had done for her. I think that's a good example of what it can do for um, all of its residents in different ways. Participating in a home has just been so rewarding. I feel honored to be able to be a part of it. And um, there are just so many organizations in need and so many places for people to donate and to volunteer and to put their attention. And a home just seems to me to be the kind of an organization where every dollar that comes to it and every hour that a volunteer spends makes a meaningful difference in somebody's life. And that kind of organization is just so valuable to the, to the community and I'm just happy to be a part of it. You know, I'm working on these um, very large affordable housing projects, um, some with for-profit owners, some with non-for-profit owners. And you know, here was a situation that was real grassroots, uh, kind of grassroots level and just formed from a bunch of community members that saw a need and it was um, really interesting to, to see the, the work that goes behind developing and financing the affordable housing and seeing it you know, really um, happening at the local level. And A Home goes beyond just providing a place to live, but they provide the services for people to really build their life back up um, if they've had a bad, you know, a bad turn of, a, of events and down on their luck, um, and really help bring them um, back into society. So I think the best thing they could do is to continue doing what they're doing. Um, you know, they have a responsibility to the people who live in the homes and um, the responsibility is just to keep the, keep the engine running and um, you know, maintain these homes for the people. And I think um, to the extent that they can do more, um, it's just more of a good thing. I think that a home is not just part of the community. A home makes community. It's, it's an intentional and deliberate thing. The coalition is such an important part of the way AHOME works. It's, it's, it's really the necessary um, component that allows community to happen because these things don't happen 
on their own or in a vacuum. It requires um, participation from a broad part of the community. Working with the coalition, working with the municipal governments, uh, working with neighbors, it's really the key to a successful project. In that 1995 clip, Gabby Rosenfeld mentioned that we charge a one-third portion of a person's income for rent. And in many of our shared housing properties, we still do that. But we've grown to include modified and traditional apartments, and we've rehabbed houses for first-time homebuyer opportunities. We also offer our management services to other nonprofit housing organizations. Our core services haven't changed, creating and managing supportive housing for low-income older adults and individuals with disabilities. But we've added single-parent family housing, and we have workforce housing property too. Our funding sources include governmental programs, foundations, corporate grants, and donations from friends like you. Thank you for being here tonight. We value your support, and I want you to know that your contributions make a huge difference in the lives of so many of our residents.